All right, hello everybody and welcome to Start Your Systems. This is Kellen Brower here and I'm doing a MXGP, the official motocross game, uh, gameplay video to discuss the uh, MXGP of Thailand coming up this weekend. I was going to do this video with Jeremy, but uh, decided to go alone and just get this one out on Friday. And uh, going to be playing the old Thailand track, which is uh, C. Rasha. Um, the new track this weekend is going to be raced at, wait, let me let me mess this name up terribly. Hold on, i got to slow down so I can read it. Uh, Nakhon Chaisri. I'm sure that's completely wrong, but uh, it's going to be a new track that they're going to race this weekend in the MXGP World Championship. And, of course, um, we're looking forward in the States to seeing Ryan Villapoto maybe turning around after a rough weekend. But I wanted to do this video to kind of get some thoughts and opinions out there about... Uh, the MXGP World Championship and how things have gone so far after one round at Qatar last weekend and uh, just do a gameplay video and something different than sim since we have a lot of sim on our channel so um, so yeah I'm just gonna do a little qualifying session here kinda screw around and then do a five lap race on C. Rasha and then yeah that should be fun so yeah last weekend um, if you didn't see it or or whatever I don't really care at this point it's already Friday so you should have seen it if you haven't already, but uh, Losail, Qatar, uh, first round of the MXGP World Championship was raced, and Ryan Villapoto didn't do as well as I think a lot of the American fans expected him to do. He went 9-8 for 7th overall, and uh, a lot of people saying, like, well, he had a horrible first moto, and of course he did. I mean, he stalled on the line or had an electrical problem on the line that caused the bike to die on the line, and uh, he started about 8 seconds down came through and then on the second lap of the race um, got taken down by Jose Butron. Not really a uh, purposeful takeout. Um, I think it was just their lines came together and a lot of people were saying like, oh, Butron's an ass and all this. And it's like, well, I mean, it was just kind of racing. Villapoto was coming from pretty far back, really trying to make some moves happen. But uh, that was unfortunate. And then Ryan again crashed later on. Um, by himself after the finish on one of the laps. I can't remember if it was like lap four or five. Anyway, he crashed twice pretty much, went off the track once I saw, and you know, stalled at the line and got back tonight. So that was pretty good. He charged really well. Um, that moto was won by Max Noggle on the Red Bull Ice One Husqvarna team. And uh, I believe DeSalle was second, Cairoli third, Paul in fourth, Van Horbeek fifth in that uh, first moto. So everybody was just kind of saying, Oh yeah, Villapoto, if he just gets a start, he's going to start ripping and tear everybody apart. Well, the second race uh, definitely didn't really kind of jump out to a, a perfect start or anything. I think maybe he's taking a little slow off the line trying to uh, not stall the bike. And uh, came around in seventh at the end of the first lap, and it's like, well, let's see what he can do now. He's seventh at the end of the first lap. Noggle was already leading, I believe. Pollen was second, Desal third, uh, Cairoli fourth. And then Van Horbeek and Simpson or somebody like that was top six with Villapoto down in uh, seventh at the end of the first lap. And so kind of just assumed that maybe turn the heat up and start charging on those guys, but really he wasn't able to do anything with it and uh, stuttered around in seventh for the first half of the race and then got passed by uh, Factory Yamaha's rider uh, Roman Fevre for seventh about midway point of the race and Febra took off from him and Villapoto just kind of settled in for an eighth so it was a I guess a frustrating weekend for Ryan but um, still was able to salvage good points and Noggle won the second moto of course and went 1-1 on the weekend to uh, take all 50 points from the weekend which is good for Noggle nice to see Noggle really turning it around and on a new team this season um, but Villapoto going 9-8 put him 25 points down of Noggle already so uh, he's got a lot to make up on Noggle but of course a lot of people assume that the battle's going to be between 8-time champion Tony Cairoli who ended up going 3-4 for 4th overall and so he ended up with I believe like 35 points or something like that so Villapoto's only 10 off of Cairoli which is pretty good after one round so that was Qatar and uh, of course we got Thailand this week so it's going to be a new week for Villapoto, a new track for everybody and uh, 
it might be good for Villapoto that it's going to be a new track. Of course, Guitar was already raced a few times by the other GP regulars, so they kind of knew what to expect. Villapoto coming in said uh, in an interview that I heard of them said that he uh, went a little wrong with the setup, which I think everybody could kind of tell. It looked pretty stiff on the forks at Qatar. wasn't quite used to the roughness, and also he said he expected the track to be a little bit more high speed, and uh, it wasn't, so that took him by surprise. But uh, yeah, maybe he'll turn things around in Thailand, and uh, that'll be good news. But like I said, I wanted to make this video to kind of get some thoughts out there and see what you guys think of of Ryan and his GP quests and how things aren't going so well so far. Um, a lot of people know me as being kind of a, a GP fan and uh, I tend to pull for GP riders. Man, why am I getting such bad lag? But I tend to pull for GP riders a little bit more than American riders, particularly when they come over to the States because, I mean, you know, a lot of the American fans right now are just totally saying like, oh, Villapoto's doing this and not many Americans would do this. and oh, we've got to applaud him for this, that, and the other thing. Well, like, what about the other, like, hundreds of GP riders in the past, like, 20 seasons that have come over to the States and pretty much given up their life to, uh, you know, pursue a dream out here? Like, what, what's so different about them, you know? I, I saw somebody say on Twitter, like, oh, you know, not many GP riders come over and, and do this, so it's kind of unfair to judge Ryan against them versus the GP riders that are here, it's like, well, what about Ken Roxon, and what about Marvin Muskan, and how about Arno Tonis right now, and like, all these guys that had super promising GP careers probably would be already ch challenging, you know, Cairoli for MX1 championships, had they stayed, at least I think Muskan would be for sure, I mean, Muskan was the MX2 world champion in 2010 and 2011, a title that he beat Ken Roxon to, so Muskan was on rails and just gave up his career there to come try to race in the States, and uh, still has had some troubles getting out of the MX or uh, out of the 250 class, you know, with injuries and stuff like that. So, you know, who knows how different his career would be if he had stayed in the GPs, but he decided to pursue a career here, and I think that's something that really needs to be applauded more. I feel like by American fans, they just assume that oh, Ryan's the only one of his kind to ever do this. It's not really that true. I mean, we see GP riders come over all the time. You know, we saw DeSalle and Kevin Strybos come over and race a couple races in 2013 and just take away time from their, you know, GP campaign to do that. So, what I what Villapoto is doing, you know, is definitely different, and uh, I like it. It's great to see because I like, you know, seeing American riders take on that challenge. I think GP riders are way 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 underrated a lot in the American spotlight um, and it's really not fair I mean they're they are all really you know great riders the top 10 in the GP class every week is probably capable of moto wins and um, you know I think that echo is pretty true and Villapoto can go 9-8 you know and and, uh, and struggle it around so I think Villapoto will definitely turn it around I'm definitely pulling for him to turn it around but uh, I still think that it's going to be a little while maybe before we see him win. But I don't know. I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Maybe in Thailand he'll turn it around. I'd like to see him get a podium this weekend at least to stay somewhat close in the points. So when he finally starts turning around and winning uh, moto after moto like I think he might, um, that uh, he's not way far down in the points. I think that Thailand is going to be a really good turnaround race for Tony Cairoli. Um, Cairoli, I believe, won in Thailand last year, so he should do well here. Even though it's a different track, like I said, it's going to be different for all the GP regulars. But, um, no, this should be a pretty good weekend. I'm excited to watch it. Um, if, for you, those of you who don't understand the timetable for the GPs, um, Saturday, or excuse me, Friday night, so tonight, um, will be all the qualifying races. Uh, that's Friday night in the United States. I think it's like somewhere around like 10 p.m. Pacific time uh, is the MX2 qualifying race. None of that stuff is on video either. Like you can watch the videos later on MXGP TV, either on their main page or on their YouTube channel. But none of that stuff is actually on a live feed anywhere. 
but the racing is going to be this Saturday night um, around the same time. Um, it's usually somewhere between one or noon or one Thailand time, and I believe Thailand is exactly 12 hours difference from East Coast time. So right around midnight, you can expect racing to start on the East Coast, and I guess like nine to ten ish area area on the West Coast. And uh, yeah, if you want to keep up with some updates on GP and stuff like that, follow me on Twitter at Kellen Brower because I do a lot of tweeting and keeping up with what's going on in the GP circuit. And then if you want live uh, race day feed coverage, follow at Verb Moto. I'm the guy that mans the Verb tweets on race day for GPs. So uh, you want to see more live coverage of that? Be sure to follow that and stick with Verb Moto during the week and weekend to see. Uh, uh, updates. We have GoPro footage, we have highlight footage, we have analytic reports, so all kinds of different stuff that you can watch and keep up on. Alright, I just laid down I think one of my best times. I'm gonna go ahead and return to pit. Man, look at that dirty machine. Very nice. Alright, let's see. How do I move to race? I haven't played this game in a while. I didn't even qualify. Yeah, whatever. YOLO! Alright, so. MXGP the game. Fun game. I enjoy playing it quite a bit. Alright, here we go. Let's see how I do. I'm starting from probably far outside. Oh, I could start inside of Philip Hertz or inside of Noggle. Why are these guys not going for inside gates? What the hell is this? Okay, we got... Uh, this is the Diker, Cairoli, this is Barbershev. I believe that's like... Frostart, maybe? Turn around. Are you Frostart or Searle? Turn around! There you go, you're Searle. This is DeSaul, Stryboss, I'll be in between Stryboss and Philip Hearts. Oh, thank you, sir. Yes, the bike it is perfect. All right, so I'm gonna do a Thailand race here. Let's see how she goes. Oh, gate is down. I'm getting pinched already. Oh, I'm gonna try to squeak through. Whoa, yeehaw. Uh. Whoa, okay. There's guys everywhere. Oh man, this is tight. Okay, got it. Get whipped on to Saul. Oh, come up short on that triple. Man, sorry, I'm not talking. I was kind of focused there for a second. It's kind of a bummer they're not racing this track in Thailand. It's actually kind of a fun track. I always enjoyed watching it. Oh, battling with Guy Roli. Oh, man, got him. Gonna get the inside onto the Diker, too. Oh, man, I knew that was gonna happen. Hey, Guy Roli running me over. That's not a nice guy. Oh, what's with my lag? Holy lag. Sort it out. There we go. Alright, one lap in the books of five, and I'm going to crash off the line like a goon. Hopefully, Villapoto doesn't crash that much this weekend. I'd honestly like to see a good battle, though. I really want to see Cairoli and Villapoto really duking it out. I mean, I, in my opinion, they're the two best riders in the world. Um, I wouldn't give either one of them the nod right now. Both of them have done so much in their careers, and uh, I don't want to take any credit away from either of them by picking one over the other. Um, Skill-wise, they're both really good. I think Cairoli 
probably a little bit technically better, but Villapoto speed-wise might be a little faster. But I would really like to see them get into like a, an actual battle, you know, where they're having to duke it out for the win. Cairoli has always been known for racing in Europe, and uh, and when he gets you know a good start, he can pull out a pretty good gap and then just have to kind of cruise it home. It, it's like it's like kind of like how McGrath used to race. Like he'd get a good gap and not have to worry too much about what's going on behind him. Um, I'd like to see Cairoli get a good start and Villapoto, you know, like run him down or something like that and then see how Cairoli responds to some pressure like that. It's really exciting for me. It just seems like it's a Motocross of Nations every weekend now because that's definitely my favorite event of the year is the Motocross of Nations. You get to see America go out there and try to beat all the Euros and uh, obviously other competitors. Not such a good uh, showing for the Americans the last few years. Of course, they lost last year at Kegums. Um, really, through no fault of anybody, unfortunately, Martin with the broken foot, and Tomac and Dungey both crashing in that last moto, and just kind of a, a rough weekend for the Americans in, in general. But I'm sure they'll get it back sooner or later. Like I said, I'm, I'm a big GP fan. I love the GP regulars, but uh, I am American, so I always root for the home team. Whoops. Looping my Larry. This game is really fun once you get the hang of it. I enjoy it much more than MX versus ATV Supercross, but that's just me. Also, if you're uh, new to our channel watching this video for the first time, you'll notice that uh, our channel contains a lot of MX Simulator videos. Um, you can expect that to change in the coming months. We're going to see more NBA Supercross and other games. Uh, just sim is kind of my general base a lot of people know me from sim so getting the name out there was easy in sim but uh, we're almost up to 700 subscribers on our channel now and i really appreciate the uh, support that everybody's given us for the channel I'm trying to get to that 1000 goal got a couple more laps here to go in thailand and that'll be a wrap put the settings on realistic mode hoping to have a good battle with some guys but uh, never really turned out to anything they pulled away pretty easily they had me pretty well covered in practice I'm not even running faster than the practice times that they had I don't know what the heck that's all about Alright, as I come to the final lap here, I'm going to go ahead and do a prediction portion of this video. Um, discussing this weekend's MXGP of Thailand. And I'm going to start off with MX2. I know I didn't talk about the MX2 class very much in this video, but of course, Hurlings went 1-1 last weekend in Qatar. Um, just edging out Dylan Ferrandis in both motos. So, uh, supposedly Hurlings not 100%, still suffering from some issues from that broken femur last year. Of course, lost the world title to Jordi Tixier in the last round in Mexico trying to race with a broken femur. Um, but uh, I think Hurlings is going to win this weekend in Thailand. I don't think he's going to win both motos. The uh, temperatures are supposed to be pretty up there in the mid to, to high 90s, I guess. And of course, Thailand a very humid climate so I think heat might get to him if he's not 100% fit I think the second moto is going to go to somebody else but I think Hurley is going to win the first moto and win the overall uh, second moto I think just based off his performance last week and I'd have to pick Ferrandis to win moto 2 uh, MXGP class I'm going to say Noggle, he's going to have the red plate. I don't think Noggle's going to win either race, though, at Thailand. I'm going to have to go with Desal winning Moto 1, Cairoli winning Moto 2. Cairoli goes 2 1 for the overall, Desal goes 1 3 for second, and then Paulin goes um, 3 2 for third, 
and Villapoto gets up there in fourth. I say he goes like 6-4 or something like that. I hope no I hope Noggle proves me wrong though. I like seeing Noggle do well. One of my uh, more favorite riders on the GP circuit. I'm a big Clement Desal fan, so I always like seeing Desal do pretty good. But uh, he's struggled in years past, so hopefully he can have a good season. But I really want Noggle to stay healthy and, and have a, a full season of uh, good riding as well. Of course, now he's going to have the red plate, a little bit more pressure on his back. It's the first win in a while for Husqvarna, I'm pretty sure, last weekend in Qatar. So good on Noggle to represent the uh, Swedish Husqvarna team well and get himself up there on the top step of the podium last week. Hopefully continues to do well. Hopefully Villapoto turns it around. And I hope in general we just see some good racing. But uh, coming to the finish here, that's going to be the end of this video. Uh, for Kellen Brower on Sire Systems, I thank you for watching. If you've made it to this point, I know I'm sometimes kind of boring. But uh, yeah, that'll do it for me in the MXGP of Thailand. So if you like this video, please subscribe. And we'll see you guys in uh, future videos.